explosive action resonance. Yeah, how come you haven't done a DVD and Blu-ray update since Christmas? What do you mean I haven't done an update? I did one in December. Sure, it was 28th of December. It was basically January. Then I did a movie shopping video. I showed a bunch of Severin titles. Then I did two bad horror movie updates. That horror DVD one didn't count. You said they were bad. Look, I want a proper DVD and Blu-ray update. I want one now. All right, all right, I get it. I'll do a Blu-ray update. I'll do one now. G'day everybody, Simon here, Explosive Action, and yes, it is time for a DVD and Blu-ray update. It's been about 10 weeks since I've done this format of update, and uh, yeah, yeah, I probably shouldn't leave it so long. Um, particularly over the Christmas period, the Christmas money comes in, the Christmas money gets spent, the orders show up, and there's too many box sets here, so this might take some time. Hopefully this doesn't take as long as Mood's last update, because he was gone for like a year. But uh, yeah, we will see how I go with this one. And the first one I'm going to start off with, uh, I've got two DVDs. The first one is a DVD that was actually sent to me for review. And uh, it's a particularly good one. I had a lot of fun with this. This is Space Wars. I'm going to give a short review here because I'm going to put a written review on explosiveaction.com. There will be a link below where you can read that when it's ready. Um, but this is a Michael Pare and Olivia Gruner uh, joint uh, leading role film. And as you can probably tell by the somewhat cheeky title, Space Wars, it's definitely a um, <coughs> Star Wars kind of film. But um, there's more to it than this. It's actually a bit more of a Flash Gordon kind of thing. Um, but So you've got uh, Michael Pare playing a captain called Kip, uh, who is a captain of a small, uh, what do you call it, like a salvage vessel. And he works with his daughter. Um, his daughter's uh, played by, what was her name? Uh, Sarah French, um, she was really good, and um, yeah, they have a salvage mission that goes bad. They don't get the money they need, it's sounding very hand solo and jabber at this point, and uh, yeah, they kind of, it, it, it goes bad that they have to flee, and they get chased by presumably the, um, the people that were paying for uh, that salvage, and uh, as well as that, they decide to use their last money uh, the last power from their hyperdrive to go on a final adventure and they do this and end up in the middle of nowhere but run into a um uh a, a helpful friend i guess we could say that steers them towards this thing called the deep star which turns out to be a uh, long lost vessel it's been lost for 20 years and promises of treasures are on board that they hope that they can sell to get their money why do they need this money this is the interesting thing about the plot. So the year is 2980, well into the future. And what I really liked about this, this plot device um, is it's, okay, when you die, you don't actually die. You, some, somehow scientists worked out that the essence, the soul of a person can be liquefied into this blue, they call it the essence, and put into a vial which can then be transported for a large expense into a cyborg body, bringing you back to life. I thought that was fantastic. And um, yeah, so that's really what the plot, the reason for the plot is, and then the search is for the Deep Star. Where does Olivia Gruner fill in, fit into this? Well, he's he's obviously the anti-Michael uh, Pare. He's the opposite of Han Solo in this one. He's he's after the, the treasures, but for his own nefarious needs. And at the same time, uh, they are being chased by um, the captain of the uh, the ship that was, I presume, was going to get the um, money, they get the items from the salvage that went bad. So yeah, they're chased by two two different groups, and uh, this is just good fun. And it's obviously low budget. I mean, it's, it's released by Uncorked, um, but director uh, Garo Setian uh, has really used the budget well. The CG, so obviously the spaceships, the space battles, it's all CG. I thought it looked really good. Like, I'm talking to like Stargate SG-1 kind of, Stargate Atlantis, that kind of era of, of CG. It looked good to me. It falls down a little bit when the CG interacts with real life. Um, sometimes you can see the green screen borders around things. Sometimes the depth perception of somebody in front of CG doesn't look great. But it's not awful. You've seen a lot, lot worse. And frankly, most of it is either um, people on a planet doing things with real people and aliens in like monster suits or just pure CG, or uh, like sitting in a spaceship that is uh, like um, 
made up of uh, set effects and things. So it's good. It goes for like 90 minutes. It's really short. There is no lag in this thing. It is just all the way through action. Now you've got Paré and you've got particularly Olivia Gruner. So uh, is there kickboxing and all that kind of stuff? There is a little bit. There's some punch ups. Uh, Gruner does get a few kickboxes in in one scene. Um, there's a lot, lot of laser shooting and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, it's the, the characters are fun. The, they're sort of like a comedy relief character, um, and she's really good. I thought she was kind of fun. Some of the the higher the actor, like the more often you see the person, the better the acting. When there's a couple of bit roles, it's a little let down, but it doesn't really matter. Um, there's some special features too. There's uh, particularly enjoyed watching the bloopers. So the bloopers um, really show the fun they were having on set. Um, and it also shows the budget constraints. There was most of the bloopers were like literally a piece of the set falling down behind them or walking in a spacesuit and the jetpacks on the back falling off three, four times. Like it's that kind of bloopers. So it's fun to see that, but they're all having a whale of a time on the set. I enjoyed it. The, the action, it's, it's not like I'm saying it's just blasting action, but it is, it, it's full throttle the whole time. There is very little time to take a pause. And when they do take a pause, there's a general, like there's an actual point for that pause and it makes sense. The CG, as I said, is good. So there's some um, man versus giant creature scenes, like, it's like you know, like your, your June type sandworm creatures. It's all good. I thought this was a good fun, uh, good fun time. Uh, I would like actually to see a prequel I think they could. I think there there is a movie here that could explore this concept of the essence. I think that'd be fun. But what we get here with um, yeah, Space Wars: Quest for the Deep Star is good fun. And as I said, this was sent to me by the director, so it was signed to me. Thank you for checking us out. And it came to me with uh, a really neat poster. So there you go. That's the film. And uh, yeah uncorked i imagine you could find this one on amazon and other kinds of retailers and yeah definitely worth checking it out if you like um just genuine th this is a bit of a passion project like um the the director uh Gar garo setian hope i'm saying that right he's done one film before this um and except for your two main stars so many of the stars in here are recurring from the first film um so like he's he's, a, he's assembled a bit of a like a you know, a collection of, of friends or uh, or um, just reliable actors to, to draw upon for these these films. And the first one too was a science fiction film. The name escapes me at the moment, but um, it was uh, like an android type of film. So I'm going to be checking that one out on the strength of this. So good stuff. Space Wars. The only other DVD to show is this one. If you watch my last uh, shopping video from last week, you would have seen me pick up, talk about, and then put down a copy of this China Strike Force. I put it down because the local DVD is full screen and I thought, oh look, let me just take a look in, on eBay and see if there's anything better. A local seller had the region one, which is in anamorphic widescreen. Not only that, it's in scope, 2.35 to one. So I would have been losing a lot if I picked up that local one. And that local one, is like an Eagle Entertainment DVD from like, you know, 2001. It's been kicking around in op shops for years. Always wanted to pick it up, but always thrown off by the fact that the aspect ratio was not just wrong, but well out. Uh, but here we are in anamorphic and in scope and i really did want to check this film out uh, it is uh one of your um well it says here from the director of rumble in the bronx and super cop one and two and obviously we have our mark dacascus here so that's the main reason picking it up it's also got coolio in it that was that time that place where you would have people like coolio in films the hit making director of rumble in the bronx and jackie chan's first strike stanley tong now brings you a fast-paced high octane adventure where extortion, murder, and drugs fuel the action for exciting star Mark Dacascus, uh from Cradle to the Grave. That's what they credit him as. Like, they could have gone with Drive, but no, they went with that. And hip-hop headliner Coolio! A renegade cop with his own rough edge way of fighting crime, Darren Tong, is on a mission to take out the vicious and greedy local mobster Tony Lau. Uh, that's Dacascus. So Dacascus is the bad guy. And his cutthroat ring of drug smugglers, but he hopes to bring them down uh, bring down Lau and cripple his notorious crime syndicate. Tong must le uh, team up with a sexy undercover agent and infiltrate the bloodthirsty gang. If you're an action fan who demands adrenaline pumping excitement, it's me, nothing hits harder than China Strike Force. So yeah, finally looking forward to checking this one out. Um, it's a Dimension DVD, so hopefully there's no issue with this being cut. Um, I mean, it's 91 minutes. They definitely did like 
chopping stuff down. It was 100, you know, 110 minutes in Hong Kong, but you know, I don't think this is a that kind of film. I'm hopeful anyway. So, uh, if you happen to know if this is not the full length cut for some reason, I need to look for an, an elusive Dutch DVD. Then let me know. But yeah, trying to strike force. Happy to get it. All right, into the Blu-rays now. This is an obscene amount. I'm going to go through this as quick as humanly possible. Um, particularly when I get to those box sets. My God, uh, yeah, there's quite a few there. But kicking to the Blu-rays, I picked up... Um, I wanted to start bolstering my Burt Reynolds selection. Uh, I picked up a couple recently, but I now I have Sharky's Machine, uh, which is from 84, 81. 81, 1981, quite an earlier... Well, not super early. He did plenty of 70s films. But in terms of the 80s output... Uh, Burt Reynolds stars in and directs this atmospheric, viol vo volatile, not violent, action thriller about an Atlanta cop whose gung-ho tactics on the narcotics case get him demoted to the vice squad. That old chestnut. He transforms a colourful crew into a machine, in italics, aimed at bigger prey. Crime Lord Victor Danton, played by Vittorio Gassman. Uh, playing vital cogs in Sharky's Machine are Brian Keith, Charles Durning, Bernie Casey, Richard Libertini and John Fielder, quite the cast. Rachel Ward is the call girl who sets Sharky's personal and professional life spinning. It's easy to get attached to the likeable characters these pros create, but beware in Sharky's Bullet for Bullet World, even the good die fast. Yeah, great cover too, hand-painted. Check this one out. Um, simple, annoying eco case, but you know, it's one of these, what, Warner? Yeah, it's a Warner, that's what they did. Orion Pictures from 81 expecting it to be good and then this is a later one i got this one and uh, a few others in this pile from the mvd sale over christmas um they had bargain prices and the, the shipping to australia felt like a mistake a few of us were saying the same thing it was like like 12 or 15 australian dollars for four blu-rays shipped they would have lost on that like there's no way it, does, it costs a lot more to send over here so i don't know how they managed it um but anyway Burt Reynolds in Raven. This one is from 96, 96 says the back, so much later. Academy Award nominee Burt Reynolds from Smokey and the Bandit, that's back in the 70s films, he is the leader of the elite mercenary team Raven on a deadly mission to obtain a poviet, po poviet, powerful Soviet. Can we, should we just do that from now on? If you get powerful and Soviet, we'll just call it poviet. Obtain a poviet satellite decoder. But when the operation is sabotaged by US officials, he sets out on a personal mission to eliminate the enemies and render his own brand of outlaw. Justice. Oh yeah. All-star cast, including Matt Battaglia from Thor, uh, Krista Allen from Anger Management, Richard Gant, The Big Lebowski. Uh, packed with spectacular effects, high energy explosions and stunt work, Raven delivers the action in the tradition of Rambo and The Expendables. But in 1996, so there you go. But yeah, I mean, Expendables, I, I can hear it in the, in the uh, you know, assembling the ragtag team, but look at that explosion. Amazing. Next up, uh, this was on the list of when are they going to release this Charles Bronson film, and the answer is they already now have Telephone, or Telephone, don't know why they dropped the off, Telephone. Um, been wanting to see this one for a long time, and I knew it was possible. Uh, other than the nefarious interwebs, there has been a HD print kicking around for a while. So it was a matter of time, and uh, Shout Factory finally got there. Uh, the Cold War gets as gets hot as master of action and violence Don Siegel from Dirty Harry presents Telephone, a thriller of international intrigue. Telephone, a KGB codename for Chilean Soviet, not Poviet, planned to blow key US military targets clear off the map, stars Charles Bronson, Lee Remick, and Donald Pleasance. Excellent. As hard-nosed players in a hot and cold game of spy versus spy. Hatched years ago during the icy Stalin era, the scheme elitists, top Soviet agents, drugged, hypnotized, planted across America, and so secret they don't know themselves, they are programmed to blow. Seen that in a couple other films, even even a crappy Seagal film, uh, Submerged, I think had that kind of a concept. The plan had been officially scrapped, but now someone is triggering explosions, and the Soviets must stop him dead. Charles Bronson is the one man able to head off the nuclear collision, of course he is, with the aid of his beautiful KGB colleague, Remick, of course she is. Telephone is fast and explosive and ringing with tension, and I am all there for it. Yeah, keen to check this one out. Got a nice, um, take this out. Full color back there, which is nice. And the disc, and happy they kept. Shout's not bad at this, keeping the poster artwork, unlike certain other companies, so it's quite nice. Uh, new 2K scan, 
uh, made in 2023 from the IP and theatrical trailer. So yeah, basic stuff, but all you need. Telephone. Excellent. Time for some Norris uh, Silent Rage. Had a few releases now, and this was one that I wanted to expunge from a three pack I had with a uh, couple of other films, obviously. And uh, I think now I don't need that three pack. Is what the point was. So yeah, Silent Rage has the slipcase. Not particularly necessary. It's got like a reflective thing, but whatever. I've always kind of liked this silly artwork. Um, I know it's just, I think, the VHS artwork, but, you know. Um, Chuck Norris, six-time world karate champion, stars in his first suspense film as the tough street fighting sheriff on a small Texas town, terrorized by a psychotic killer. Sheriff Stevens, that's Norris, is faced with the dilemma of stopping the invincible murderer made virtually indestructible through genetic engineering. A young group of researchers are responsible for developing the genetically altering serum and the head of the research institute is determined to continue the experiments regardless of the consequences. Norris displays fighting brilliance as he single-handedly routes a dozen brutal, brutal bikers from a truck stop hangout while revealing a warm and sexy side when he rekindles an old romance with Alison Hellman. That's played by Tony Callum. Researcher of the institute, excitement, horror, romance prevail as Norris combats the killer with interactive menus. Oh my god, 88 Films, you actually wrote that. 2024 interactive menus but it has a trailer so you know it's all good so yeah basic stuff but uh yeah i just wanted it on its own disc and now i have it very cool chuck norris doing a bit of a horror thing this one was one of those um if you watch amazon every now and then things just drop you know it has a little red box says like special price and you're like, okay this was one of them it happens a lot with kino catch the heat the cover certainly caught my attention i don't know the film it's from 1987 so like i mean it hits a few sweet spots here Rod Steiger's in this again. Um, uh, Tiana Alexandra, who I presume is on the left, and David Dukes, who I presume is there on the, on the right. Great cover, great painted artwork. Um, and it's from 1987, and uh, we shall read. It is uh, Tiana Alexandra from The Killer Elite is Checkers Goldberg. She's tough, she's deadly, like a one-woman strike force. She punches, kicks, and shoots her way from the streets of San Fran to the underbelly of South America in the sizzling action-packed thrill ride, Catch the Heat. Following a grisly trail of violence to Buenos Aires, Checkers masquerades as an exotic dancer, Cinderella Poo, with P-U, as discovers that kingpin Jason Hannibal, deviously played by screen great Rod Steger, is smuggling heroin out of the country by surgically implanting the contraband inside the bodies of unsuspecting young women. Ooh. Pretending to submit to Hannibal's gruesome operation, Checkers is suddenly plunged into the ultimate confrontation. Only her wits and blazing martial arts savvy can save her. Co-starring David Jutes from Rawhead Rex. Great film. Professor Toru Tanaka. Yes! From The Perfect Weapon. Brian Thompson from Cobra. Explosive 80s actioner. He sold me with that. Features direction by Joel Sealberg from Breakin, Rappin and Lambada. Now you could have lost me there. But anyway, from a script by award-winning screenwriter Sterling Stillifant in the heat of the night, Charlie and Towering Inferno. So look, it sounds bloody good to me. Uh, just a simple slip there. And disc, reversible cover, which is, oh yeah, has that, that artwork and that artwork. I already flipped it. So yeah, cool, different artworks. This should be good fun. Gonna be checking out Catch the Heat. Next one, Mondo's Death Squad. There was a 4K, uh, don't care, so I missed that one. Um, like it went in like six hours or something, I remember. Um, these pre-orders for from like, what, Thanksgiving time? Like November, something like that? I don't know, ages ago. And they only just sort of dropped in the last, uh, I got this last week, I think. So, you know, they're, they're shipping now. You're, if you haven't got yours, you'll get yours soon. Uh, but they then did a second bundle. They just had the Blu-ray edition, which is all I wanted. Save me money anyway. Um, but I have not seen this one. It had a German release, somebody said. But um, yeah, great cover. Uh, Death Squad, directed by Max Picar. The font they use on the back here is always a bit funny. Uh, it's late at night in the notorious Bois de Boulange forest outside Paris. A group of transsexual prostitutes offer their services to passing motorists. Suddenly we hear the roar of a powerful motorcycle engine kicked into life. Headlights pierce the darkness in the forest. Two bikes appear. Their riders dressed in black leathers, faces masked, heavily armed with assault rifles. The prostitutes scatter, chased by the riders who slaughter them in a hail of bullets before vanishing into the night. That's a grisly opening. 
In the morgue, Inspector Gerard Latuada of the Paris Vice Squad recognizes one of the dead as a police informant known as Dolores. He learns that a notorious crime boss called The Greek ordered the killing of Dolores to settle a grudge. As Latuada investigates further, he discovers a psycho psychopathic and sadistic hitman employed by The Greek, intent on taking over Paris underworld by any means possible. Violent, deadly gang war that happens, etc, etc. Sleaziest and most violent crime films ever made in France. Gained much notoriety, notoriety was classified X by the French censor. I don't know what X particularly means in France, if that means can't, it's refused, or if that's sort of like it's, it's adult film, but uh, it's, it's an X. Uh, first ever US release of the film. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to checking this one out. 4K transfer. Uh, English and French audio, English subs, interviews, more interviews, and another interview. And it comes because it's the red case one, you get the booklet. So there you go. Things about the film and the disc. Uh, but yeah, I remember when this, this pack got announced, most people were like, shit, yeah, Death Squad. So the fact they were all going ape over it means I should like it. I got number 208 quite early. Next up, this was the thing that made me go, okay. I've said it before, you know, golden age, all bets are off, but we have now hit the point where literally anything can happen because we have special silences on Blu-ray. This was relegated, as far as I know, all it had was a Dutch VHS, which is what I had. I don't think it had any other release. There was a Dutch original, and then there was a Dutch sort of reissue that's you know, controversial about its legality, but anyway. Um, and that's all I know. I don't think any other releases existed. Uh, if they did, I don't know them. But this thing? Damn! I mean, Arizal does crazy films. Indonesian film. Director Arizal's films are all crazy. But this one is mental. Um, I don't even really need to read the back, but... Uh, it's a legendary entry into the Indonesian cult film canon, chock full of crazy martial arts, unbelievably yucky special effects, and a touch of black magic. Uh, the plot is simplicity itself. A corrupt pol politician in rural Indonesia wants to impose himself as the boss of the local territory. To do this, he has to eliminate the competition. And this is, wait for this. To do that, he uses his special silences. Small red pills apparently intended to enhance meditative states but when taken with food or drink, they erupt in the victim's stomach and emerge through the flesh like a ragged, blood-covered tree branch. Pills that cause trees to grow out of your stomach. Uh, but that's not all. The film features dynamic duos, soon to be husband and wife, of Eva Ar Arnaz and Barry Prima. Good old Barry Prima. Big stars in Indonesia at the time and both skilled martial artists. Seeking Eva kick bad... Seeing Eva kick bad guy ass is a joy to behold. Amazing. Uh, like, uh, it's just amazing I'm even holding this, but what is exceptional, and I remember running into him uh, in Sydney, and he let on before this release came out, we knew this release was coming, but I ran into him in Sydney, and he said, I'm doing a commentary for it, I'm like, there's no better man to do it, Andrew Leivold, uh did a commentary on this one, uh, and I don't usually listen to commentaries, I go into with special silences, because... The man knows he's, he's Filipino, he's Indonesian, he's Hong Kong films. Uh, so, yeah. And, I mean, a book of the things. Just, ah, like, ah, failing at peeling through the book because I can't be bothered getting it out. But, uh, you know, there you go. There's there's some of the sort of the VHS kind of art. Let's, let me see, actually, if they have the VHS art in here. Because it's quite spectacular. Uh, we've got Thai poster. Um, interesting po I'm not That's a different film, I think. War Victims, different film. So this looks to be a yeah, press book for special silences. Oh, I'd love the press book if I could get one. There you go. There is the Dutch VHS. That's what I had. Uh, it now has another home. But... Uh, just... I cannot believe I'm holding a Blu-ray. Not, I mean, we didn't even go through the phase of having a grey market German DVD. We just went straight to a HD restored feature supplied by Parkett Films. In 2.35 to 1 scope. Special silences from Arizal. 
show some more Mondos now. I've got a couple in some fancy slipcases. They're so fancy, they didn't even put the covers, uh, the title on the cover. Uh, but this one is Dr. Jekyll and the Werewolf, which is very, very cool to have. I actually like this, this custom artwork. Usually some of these annoy me a bit, but um, Rick Mel Melton is, uh, did this cover artwork. I think it's really kind of cool. Um, I realized I just showed cartoon boobs, but whatever. Um, let's have a look inside quickly before I read from the back and potentially have to obscure some boobs. Booklet, which is insanity. Um, and lobby cards, which is very cool. And two discs, uh, Blu-ray and a whoop, 4K UHD. I knew I dropped something in this update. Um, so let's talk quickly about the film. And I might just cover it up this way, just to be nice to the senses, bloody hell. Anyway, Dr. Jekyll and the Werewolf, directed by Leon Kimovsky in Spain, 1972. Uh, this is the fifth film to feature Spanish actor Paul Nashi as Voldemar the Wolfman. So he's done plenty of these things at this point. They've been, uh, I think, we've, there's at least four of them released on Blu-ray. So it's excellent. Previous episode, Fury of the Wolfman, had not been well received. Uh, Nashi was determined to get the series back on track with his next appearance as the Wolfman. He pulled out all the stops. Here he comes to swinging 70s London, seeking a cure to his malady. Malady? Malady. Unfortunately, he meets Dr. Jekyll, who injects him with a serum that turns him into the less lascivious killer. Lascivious. What a great word that is. Mr. Hyde. In his top hat and black cloak, Hyde haunts the flesh pots of Soho while two gorgeous women fight for possession of his wolfman's soul. Of course they do. Top grade Euro horror, definitely the craziest and weirdest werewolf film ever. Uh, and here for the first time in glorious ultra high definition, uh, including the Spanish cut and the rarely seen expert version of the film. So that is really cool. Um, Paul Nashi on Dr. Jekyll interview with Sergio Molina. Um, and uh, we got some, um, just trying to skip through it here. Commentary from the Nashi cast, a double-sided sleeve, which new artwork by Rich Moulton, and the original poster artwork, lobby card, reproductions, 20k, 20 page booklets. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. Loving that we're getting all of these Nashies. Um, like I said, I don't particularly need the 4k aspect of this, but it does have a nice Blu-ray in there as well. So there you go. We have Dr. Jekyll and the Werewolf. Next up, another slipcase one. Um, which is kind of sort of double-sided uh, because we've got Secrets and Mysteries, films by uh, Pedro Olea. There's two films in here, so that is why we have two sides. Um, first one we have is The House Without uh, Frontiers. House Without Frontiers. I don't know much about these ones. This is one of those deals where three of the, I think it was three of the four, whatever. All except this made me get the bundle, and I thought, well, if I'm getting the, the rest, I may as well just get the bundle and see what this one's like. House Without Frontiers, um, directed by Pedro Olea, Spain, 1972. Um, this one, I'm going to skip through some of this. Um, Daniel moves from his small hometown to the big city of Bilbao in search of a new life. He is recruited to work for a mysterious organization known as the House Without Frontiers. He is given the task of tracking down Lucy Alvaro, a young woman who fled the organization after a senior member was found murdered. During his search, Daniel begins to question the exact nature of the House Without Frontiers when he tries to ask employers about the assignment. He is repeatedly thwarted in his attempts, culminating in an incident where he finds the main headquarters deserted and two construction workers walling up a doorway in the Labyrinth Mansion. Finally, he discovers he is falling in love with the girl he has never met. Was she guilty of murder? Was it a sinister game being played? Well, we shall have to watch to find out. But what I will do, because they've done it that you have to flip the cover to see and talk about the other film, so I will quickly do that now. And here we are. We have... Uh, it's Not Good for a Man to Be Alone, which has really cool artwork on that one. So there we go. Not Good for a Man to Be Alone. I'll read from the back on this one. Uh, from 73. Martin, played by Jose Luis Lopez Vasquez, a legend of Spanish film and theatre, is a middle-aged engineer employed by a big shipbuilding firm in the northern city of Balbao. Again, quiet, diligent in his work and reserved, Martin is a model of respectability. His secretary, Monica, played by Helga Lyne, or Linne, often asks about his wife, whom no one has ever met and seems to be an invalid. Uh, every evening after work, Martin returns to his big gloomy house that looks over the bay and towards the North Atlantic Ocean. 
What his colleagues and the world do not know is what happens then behind closed doors. For Martin's wife, it's written in inverted commas, is certainly not an invalid. In fact, he has a very unusual relationship with her, one he is very concerned to keep a secret. Dark and moody thriller drenched in a mysterious, mist-stoked atmosphere of the old city of Bilbao. The film was a huge hit in 1973 and ripe for rediscovery. This one does sound uh, the most interesting of, of the two to me, so I'll probably watch that one first. Um, and uh, yeah, 4K transfer from the 35mm. So yeah, you get them on uh, two discs. Each film gets a disc, which is nice. We get a bunch of lobby cards again, as you do with the Mondos, and a hefty book here about the films themselves. Some nice artwork, lots and lots of essay information. So yeah, good thing to read whilst watching. So yeah, happy to check these two out. Uh, I think I will start with this one first, but um, yeah, good stuff. Films from Pedre Olia. Now, we are into uh, the Kino Cults. I was going, now like I've said before, I've kind of given up on just collecting spine numbers for the sake of it. Who's got time for that? And I was wondering if I was just by chance with the Kino Cult range going to collect them all because they were just banger, banger, banger. Everything they were releasing, I wanted. And then I looked up and there was like a strange comedy or something coming. And I went, oh, okay, well, clearly that's not going to happen. But I was going to pick up what happens to be number four, Sinner. Because it's Jess Franco. Love me some sleazy Franco. Um, let's read from the back of Uncle Jess. A film by legendary cult director Jesus Jess Franco, the diabolical Dr. Z, uh, made in the height of Franco's creative prowess, Sinner, the secret diary of a nymphomaniac, quality title, Grindhouse Citizen Kane. <laughs> Moody tale of one woman's sexual evolution and shocking demise through the eyes of those that knew her. When Linda, that's Mons, Monster, what? Mont, Montserrat Prouse, Montserrat Prouse, dies in the arms of her lover, Manuel Piero. The man's wife, Jacqueline Laurent, investigates the dead woman's past to try and clear her husband's name. As it weaves together the tangled threads of Linda's tragic life, Sinner leads the viewer into a voyeuristic labyrinth of seedy discotheques, sultry jazz clubs, delicious 70s sex pads, backed with an acid rock soundtrack and oversaturated visuals. Five for five there, Uncle Jess. Edge of Psychedelia. Within its depths, Sinner reveals unexpected layers of narrative and emotional complexity, demonstrating why Franco remains one of the most underappreciated filmmakers of European cinema. Excellent. Uh, Stephen Thrower would agree with that statement. I wonder if he's on here somewhere. There he is! Interview with Stephen Thrower, author of Murderous Passions. Um, of course, he would be involved, uh, which is great. Uh, interview with actresses, audio commentary by novelist uh, critic Tim Lucas. Um, English and French audio tracks. French audio track. Interesting. I shall watch it in English, uh, but there you go. 1973's Sinner. The slip cover, and uh, yeah, just the disc in there. But yeah, good stuff on the Kino Cult range. Um, don't personally know why they need to make it a separate range, but you know, because Kino was already all over the map. But uh, whatever, Sinner, good stuff. Next up. Nice upgrade. This was a good gothic one. I picked this up only last year, the older Olive release. Um, I only learnt the film. I saw, oh, this is the Olive release. Quick, get it. That company's gone. Get it before you can't. And now I've already sold it because Radiance has done a new version. Vinegar Syndrome's also a parallel done a 4K. But of course, I just went with the Radiance. And I love that cover artwork. That's fantastic stuff. The horrible Dr. Hitchcock. Uh, one day, the necrophiliac tendencies of Dr. Hitchcock, played by Robert Flem Fleming, the Quiller me memor Memorandum, go too far and his wife dies from an overdose. Bereft, the Doctor leaves his house but returns years later with a new wife, Cynthia, played by Barbara Steele. The house they return to is eerie and Cynthia hears strange things. Meanwhile, she doesn't realise Dr. Hitchcock intends to use her body to reanimate the dead wife's corpse. Of course. <coughs> Excuse me. Released at the height of the Italian horror boom that was produced in the wake of the influence of Hammer's era, defying horror. It, it's exactly what this is. It feels like an Italian Hammer. Absolutely is. Um, director Riccardo Freda from the Iguana with the Tongue of Fire. Good fun, Giallo, that one. And screenwriter Ernesto Gastaldi, The Whip and the Body. Classic Mario Bava. What a great combination that is, too. I mean, The Whip and the... Like, that Bava aesthetic and Hammer... And the giallo touch there, bang, that's what you get. Dr. Hor 
the horrible Dr. Hitchcock, a dark and wicked gothic horror that brings in uh, sly allusions to work of Alfred Hitchcock, while the period detail of Victorian London provides a lush backdrop. It's fantastic. Barbara Steele is really good in this one. Um, 1962, so she's quite young. Um, 2023 2K restoration of the film from the OCN presented in three versions on two Blu-rays. So, yeah, it'd be too much of a coincidence for me to to, to assume that Binninger Syndrome and, and Radiance didn't share, but maybe they didn't. Um, I don't really know. Disc 1, uh, not the original 87-minute version um, with the English dub. Um, and the, uh, the original 87-minute version, Italian version, and the English dub of the complete 87-minute Italian cut, Raptus, The Secret of Dr. Hitchcock. Disc 2, exclusive to this limited edition, is the reordered 76-minute North American version of The Horrible Dr. Hitchcock. And there you go, shortcut. Um, feels like a Corman kind of thing, just chop it right down, bare essentials. Audio commentary by critics Kat Ellinger um, and Annie Rose Malame. Uh, Tim Lucas audio commentary, uh, new interview with screenwriter Ernesto Gastaldi, goes for over half an hour. Uh, visual essay on Dr. Horrible Hitchcock, um, interview with Madeline Le Dispenser on necrophilia. That, 18 minutes about necrophilia and taboo gothic. Trailer, gallery, reversible stuff, and 54 page book. Um, so you get the sort of OBI strip kind of thing that they do, which is cool. Disc disc and nice there reverse which is really nice i do like this though that's classic stuff and booklet with a bit, a bit of a sad steel there this is a huge book good stuff great read there you go so for me this is i mean this is the kind of thing this kind of presentation two discs lovely booklet new scam this is where for me i just go we're done no need now there is no if anyone announces something else what's the point you've got everything now the horrible Dutch dr. Hitchcock excellent um, more from that uh, MVD sale I picked up the banker I was eyeing this one off from code red and dark force way back when never picked it up uh, but this was one of the ones got a wide release through MVD it's number 17 on dark force it does have the code red logo too uh, back from the banana man days but um, yeah these were like, what, eight bucks or something on MVD? Really, really cheap. Back to the 80s horror with this 1989 crime thriller. Features an ensemble cast led by the legendary Robert Foster, best known for Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown. In fact, it is said this picture was one of Quentin's favorites while he worked as a video store clerk eight years previous. I could see that. The story revolves around high-priced prostitutes being brutally murdered and their bodies mutilated. Investigating cop, Robert Foster is out to solve the crime before his ex-wife, Shanna Reed. Uh, a reporter becomes the next victim. Duncan Rieger from the Monster Club is the menacing banker. Jeff Conaway from Taxi. Leif Garrett from The Outsiders. Deborah Richter from Cyborg. And Richard Roundtree from Shaft. Amazing. Uh, round up the all-star cast. Shortly before the production of this release was completed, Robert passed away in 2019. Dark Force would like to dedicate this release to his memory. <laughs> Whatever. But uh, yeah, I'm keen to check this one out. And that... Car, that picture there was what I remember from I think VHS covers or posters so very nice it would be the, would have been nice if they had that as a reverse but uh, you know that that feels like a missed opportunity like I know everyone knows this photo it's from something a poster or a cover but we ended up with that ah whatever whatever the banker keen to check it out finally um, I've been told to check to bump this one right up the list because I've never actually seen it uh, this is Christopher Walken, The Dogs of War. Yeah, I know. This is one of those ones I think I just should have seen by now. Christopher Walken uh, is a brutal mercenary who must fight the ultimate battle against his own conscience in this powerful action thriller with a heart-thumping tempo. Uh, the Dogs of War is a spectacular adventure brilliantly captures the glory and horror of war. Jamie Shannon is a cynical warrior for hire and feels truly only alive in the heat of battle. Now he's about to take on the most challenging assignment of his career, invade a corrupt African dictatorship and shift control to the puppet of a powerful British corporation. To prepare, Shannon masterfully trains and equips a squad of deadly mercenaries with the latest and most destructive tactics and military hardware. As the explosive assault begins, Shannon finds himself embroiled in an eternal conflict of his own. Will this be the greatest triumph or has he sold his soul along with the battle expertise? Tom Berenger is in this thing, Paul Freeman, 
is in this uh, Hugh Millais, uh, Joe Beth Williams from Poltergeist, Colin Blakely, uh, co star in this explosive action. Explosive action film, beautifully filmed by award winning DP Jack Carter from The African Queen and The Awakening, skillfully directed by John Irvin, Hamburger Hill, next to Kin, Raw Deal. Raw Deal is an underrated Arnie film, and I will fight to the death about that one. Now we see this explosive film in a brand new 2K transfer. Glorious stuff. Nice reverse cover on that one. Happy with that. And uh, oh, there you go. Disc and the original cover there. So, yeah. This one was a scorpion through MVD. So, um, yeah. Both brothers Olsen have passed away now. We get the international cut 118 minutes and theatrical cut 104 minutes. Which is very cool to have both. I don't know where to start. I presume the longer cut. I'll watch the longer cut, I guess, because I've not seen the film. And new 2022 k scan. So it's a few years old now, but whatever. There you go. The Dogs of War. And also, from that lot, I picked up James Can Rollerball. Never seen it. I know, right? I should have seen this being I but by now, but I haven't seen it. I've seen bloody the Wesley Snipes version, whatever that was called. I only watched that a little while ago. Um, but I have I haven't seen this. And I haven't I, isn't there a remake or something? I I haven't I don't want to see that. The year is 2018. Ooh, the future. There are no wars, there is no crime, there is only the game. This in a world where ruthless corporations reign supreme, the vicious barbaric sport is the only outlet for pent up anger and frustrations of the masses. Uh, it sounds like robot jocks. Tuned into the televisions, the people watch Rollerball, a brutal mutation of football, motocross, and hockey. Uh, Jonathan E, that's James Kahn, uh, is the champion player, a man too talented for his own good. Corporation has taken away the woman Jonathan loves, but they can't take away his soul. Even if diabolical corporate head, John Houseman from Three Days of the Condor, tells him that he better retire or suffer the old-fashioned way. Also starring John Beck, uh, from Audrey Rose, Moses Gunn from Shaft, and Shane Rimmer from The People That Time Forgot, directed by Norman Jewison from The Thomas Crown Affair in, in the Heat of the Night. Uh, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar, okay. Uh, surreali surrealistic imagery and tension, tense action sequences, Rollerball grips you by the heart and never lets go. In a 4K scan, so if I'm going to watch it for the first time, I'm glad it's this edition. Uh, audio commentaries and um, featurette and blood sports and interview with James Khan. That's cool. And uh, theatrical trailers and TV spots. So there you go. I finally get to check out Rollerball and I get to see it from Scorpion release. Um, 125 minutes, 1975 and in 185 to 1 and 4K scan. Lovely. And the last one from this pile is Spellcaster. And I'm going to call out because he asked me to call him out. Brother Kiray down there in Melbourne who was selling a lot of his vinegar syndromes and I spotted this one. This I missed uh, picking up at the time and uh, it uh, became very, very hard to get. This is one of those VSA titles that went out of print. So I was a bit annoyed because it's a full moon and I was really now, after that Empire Pictures full moon box set, I really wanted to get more of them. And uh, I realized the spell cast was one of them. Damn, had to pick it up. So uh, he sold it for a very reasonable price, and I was very, very happy with that. So Spellcaster. Read from the back here. Uh, obviously, Empire Pictures and Charles Band. Group of strangers have been invited to partake in a promotional televised treasure hunt at a remote Italian castle. The winner walking away with a million dollar fortune. The old gothic building has diabolical tricks up its sleeve. It is not long before the guests begin to fall victim to its demonic secrets. All while the surviving guests begin to come up with creative, deadly ways to try and locate the hidden treasure. It's a basic plot. Um, and it's got Adam Ant in it. He may be blasted on the cover. He's only in the last 10 minutes. Spoilers. But, um, yeah. It's fun. It's not quite as good as the stuff in the Empire Pictures box set, like Robot Jocks and Arena and that kind of thing. It's the next tier down for me. Um, but it is fun. The characters are all routinely awful, which I think was either a good thing or a bad thing. Like, they're all hideous. Um... But uh, it is it is silly, goofy fun, and it's got good effects. So yeah, I enjoyed it. It was it was like a solid three out of, three out of five kind of thing for me. Um, poster in there as well. But uh, yeah, I mean I can sort of see why it wasn't included in that Arrow box set. I mean, it, assuming that they even had the ability to get it, I could see why it was not the one not included. Like it's it's a tear down, but it's still enjoyable. Spellcaster, very cool. Into the next pile now, and Jesus, I mean, there's so many things here. Oh, I'm going to rapidly go through these, I think. 
fantastic to get an upgrade of Slaughter in San Francisco. All I had was the Umbrella DVD, which was uh, yeah, not so great. Um, not even sure what other releases there were of the film. It was kind of VHS for ages. Um, but yeah, oh, look, I needed to get this thing. Um, very early Chuck. Uh, San Francisco police officers Don Wong, that's Wong Tao, and John Summer, uh, Sumner, Robert Jones, save a young woman, Sylvia Chang, from being assaulted by a gang of criminals. Unfortunately, the crime in San Fran is run by Chuck Slaughter. How good is that, Chuck Norris? Like, I, I love that. He didn't even have to really go very far with it. They, on set, they could just go, hey, Chuck, and either way it works. Brilliant. Who doesn't take kindly to police interfering in his business. Wong is kicked off the force by his corrupt captain. Sumner is murdered by Slaughter's men using his powerhouse kung fu skills. Wong vows to clean up the street and take down Slaughter once and for all. So it's... It's Wong Tao's film, um, and you know Chuck is is just a bad guy. He doesn't show up that often. Now, obviously, there's a big fight uh, towards the end. But gloriously trashy slice of gritty kung fu action, Slaughter in San Fran, was produced by Raymond Chow's attempt to capitalize on Hong Kong cinema's sudden explosion in popularity in the West. Eureka Classics proud to present Slaughter in San Francisco, first time ever on Blu-ray in a 2K restore, and a boatload of features on the back here. Um, obviously, the O card slip. Um, 1080p restoration of the original HK theatrical and the US export versions from 2K restorations. So you get everything you need. Original Mandarin mono audio for the Hong Kong theatrical. Classic English dubbed mono audio for the US export version. Optional English subtitles newly translated for this release. Feature length commentary by Asian film experts Frank Zhang and Michael Worth appear in so many of these commentaries. Um, Feature-length audio commentary by Mike Leader, also in so many of these commentaries, and Arne Venema on the US export version. Karate Cowboy, Talking Chuck, new featurette by CFK Productions on the film career of Chuck Norris, so that's immediately something I'm going to have to watch. Return to Slaughter, the shooting locations of Slaughter in San Francisco, very cool. Uh, that's a documentary by, new, by, by Michael Worth, looking at the filming locations. Uh, interviews um, with producer... Andre Morgan and lead actor Wong Tao. Trailers and a limited edition collector's booklet, which we all look at right now. 2.39 aspect ratio, very thin. Um, not so much in the way of a reversible sleeve, like there's an, there's an artwork behind here. But um, I, yeah, maybe there just wasn't good enough things. The umbrella had a terrible recreation cover as well. Um, I would have thought there would have been a poster they could have used. Let's have a look. I mean, there's the booklet. Um, but uh, yeah, not immediately seeing any like poster shots. So I don't know um, what the go is with that. Maybe there were just no good promotional posters they could have used as a reverse sleeve, which would have been nice, but it doesn't matter. So yeah, very happy. Again, this is the kind of thing, bam, we've hit the top. We've got the, d the different dubs and we've got a 2K scan and it's in scope, bam, we're done. We now have the release you need for something like Slaughter in San Francisco. Amazing. Next up. Uh, picked this up from a buddy because he bought too many copies of it and helped me out because uh, he had it cheap, which is The Medallion, one of the later Jackie Chan films. And I'm just trying to get basically all the Jackie Chan at this point. I'm not fussed with things like Rush Hour. I mean, I've got the DVDs, like a, a, a DVD trilogy. Uh, it's fine, whatever. Um, but yeah, Medallion, got some good reasons for, for this one. After high-kicking Hong Kong cop Eddie Yang, Jackie Chan, dies in the line of duty. He finds himself reanimated by ancient... Uh, by ancient mystic talisman now with superpowers he re <laughs> his return stuns his former girlfriend Nicole James uh, played by Claire Forlani from Meet Joe Black oh god and partner Arthur Watson Lee Evans there's something about Mary the trio must rejoin take forces on a similarly supernaturally enhanced villain Snakehead Julian Sands from Warlock that's why you see this and his right-hand man, Calvin, played by Scott Adkins. Yeah! This is some seriously early Adkins uh, in this film. So it's immediately mandatory for me as an Adkinite. I think I made that up. Um, but yeah, Julian Sands, Scott Adkins, Jackie Chan. Mwah! Fantastic. Shot in English by director Gordon Chan, uh, Fist of Legend, which is mysteriously missing from my collection, that one. I don't have that. And choreographer Samo Hung. Medallion delivers a whole new kind of magic to Jackie Chan action epic. So there you go. Uh, you just get the sort of reflective slip. Oh, Scott Adkins and Jackie Chan, my God. But yeah, 2003, that's very early days for, for Mr. Scott Adkins. Um, 
And uh, yeah, HD presentation, uh, 2.39 to 1 Prezzo, 5.1 surround sound, and 2.0 stereo DTS HDMA. 14 deleted scenes, alternate ending, in-depth full-length audio commentary with producer and editor, trailer, and subtitles. So yeah, the medallion. I'm actually going to bump it up the list and watch this one uh, quite soon for the, I mean, the, the Sands and the Atkins factor. That's, that's outstanding. Um, all right, these I don't know much about. Uh, many of the Eureka ones, I was kind of just like, I mean, don't read the comments on Eureka at the moment on Facebook because there's a lot of grumpy people going, Meh, more Hong Kong, more Asian films from Eureka. It's getting really sad because people only want them to be basically being criterion. But screw that. I'm, I'm loving this, this, this Eureka Hong Kong, Japan films. It's Look, I'm loving it. That's why I'm buying them. Yakuza Wolf 1 and 2. Uh, a duo of ultra-violent Yakuza thrillers starring Sonny Chiba. Uh, available for the first time in the UK. Uh, Spaghetti Western inspired, I perform murder. A mysterious black-clad killer Chiba with a personal vendetta against the Yakuza manipulates two rival clans in order to draw out his targets, leading to a climactic bloody shootout that must be seen to be believed. Then, in Extend My Condolences, Part 1, Part 2, Chiba plays a criminal who is betrayed and sent to prison. After serving his time, he wages war on the Yakuza, uh, eventually raiding the mansion of his crime boss who turned on him in a spectacular action-packed climax that would later be directly homaged, homaged by John Woo in A Better Tomorrow 2. So, I mean, it all sounds perfectly great to me. 1972, quite early uh, there, Chiba. Ocard, uh, new artwork. I like this new artwork. This style, if you're going to do some custom artwork, this kind of artwork is what you, um, I think it's great. Really, really detailed sort of line art stuff there. Really quite nice. Um, by Chris Malbon. Uh, 1080p presentations of both films on two discs. I'll show it in a second. Uh, new restorations from The Elements by Toei. Uh, English subs. Brand new feature length audio commentaries by Mike Leader. Arnie Van, Van Emmer. Lone Wolves. Yojimbo, Django and Yakuza Wolf. Brand new featurette by Howard Hughes. Looking at spaghetti western influences on Yakuza Wolf and broader influence Japanese cinema had on the Western genre. That would be quite informative. Original trailers, limited edition collector's booklet. Let's take a look inside. Whoops. There you go. Yakuza Wolf. Is that a... Uh, it's original. It looks like it's more from a lobby card or something. I don't know. But, uh, yep. There we go. Booklet. Disc 1. And disc 2. Very nice. And that is reversible. So, whoop. Pull it out there. There's Yakuza Wolf 2. And there's number one. So very nice. Get you back in there. And the book. There you go. More things on the film. Well, there you go. That does look like a poster. So there you go. Poster artwork. Stuff about Samurai cinema. cinema. So this should be good stuff. And uh, yeah, do looking forward to checking these out. There's a bunch of these one and two pack things like uh, you know part one, part two that Eureka are doing um, and have been doing. So yeah, good stuff. Yakuza Wolf one and two, enjoy. I'm sure. Brand new Criterion. Didn't expect this from them. Heroic Trio, Executioners. Um, and uh, this is this is actually funny for me um, because I have a crappy DVD of, and have seen Executioners and I've never seen Heroic Trio. I didn't realize there was a relation, but yeah, it's sort of part one, part two. There you go. And either way, uh, I now have a nice, delicious Criterion Blu-ray. So, amazing. Uh, this is, um, yeah, Johnny Toe Films. So, star power of cinema icons Maggie Cheung, always good, Anita Mui, Mui and Michelle Yao, uh, fuels these gloriously unrestrained action joyrides from Altair Johnny Toe and action choreographer uh, Ching Sui Tong. Heroic trio and its sequel, Executioners follow a new kind of Justice League team of blade throwing shotgun toting kung fu fighting heroines heroines who join forces to battle evildoers in a dystopian noirish city blending dazzling martial arts mayhem with exhilarating blasts of comic book lunacy these beloved superhero movies reimagine the genre through giddy genius of hong kong film industry at its height when did this come out 93 yeah 93 i mean up to 96 97 is about when hong kong films were that, that's sort of where you know, yeah, China mainland takes over again. Um, but yeah, 93, there was some crazy stuff coming out at this time. Uh, Heroic Trio in Cantonese with English subs and Executioner uh, in Cantonese with English subs. 
and it is a Criterion 4K restorations of both alternate English dubbed and 5.1 surround Cantonese soundtracks. Uh, but yes, stick with the monos, that's how they were shot. Um, new interview with Anthony Wong, new interview with film critic Sam Dean, co-host of podcast Twitch of the Death Nerve, I know that podcast, trailers, new English subtitles, and an essay. Inside, two lovely looking discs, even the discs are nice. And the fold out. Yeah, just Criterion usually do posters. I actually don't have that many kind of things from them, but yeah, poster. And yeah, here's your essay on the back of the poster, so read it before you hang it up. But uh, yeah, very, very nice. Nice addition. Kind of unexpected, I think, um, from Criterion, but um, in a way, also not. Heroic Trio Executioners. Very nice. Next up, we have uh, Ringo Lamb's Burning Paradise. Vinegar Syndrome did this as well. I didn't pick it up, I don't remember why, but hey! Got the Eureka, it's probably going to be the same damn thing. Um, read from the back, director Ringo Lamb from Wild Search. Hopefully we get that one day. City on Fire. Only film uh, in the wuxia, wuxia, I've never known, is that how you say it, wuxia? Genre is also one of his best and bloodiest. Haunted by the Manchu government, a young Fong Sai Yuk is captured and sent to the Red Lotus Temple. When Shaolin monks are enslaved and viciously tortured by the sadistic warning, warner, warden Kung, uh, Wong Kam Kong. Thrown into a pit of corpses and left to die, Wong survives and attempts to save his Shaolin brothers. Produced by Sui Hark, uh, Burning Paradise is a dark fantasy epic filled with shocking violence and incredible choreography. Um, presented for the first time in the UK since the VHS era. Well, there you go. And I had this, uh, an, another, I've got like one of those crappy local DVDs put out by. I don't know, quite low budget thing. Can't remember who put it out, but I watched it on there and it was really, really nasty looking print. Um, but this won't be, that's for sure. 2K restoration from the 35mm OCN, uh, Cantonese mono, newly translated subtitles, brand new feature length audio commentary by Frank Jiang, archival interview with Sui Hark, and original trailer and the collector's booklet, which we shall take a look at. Uh, I do prefer this original reverse poster, which is nice. Disc. Booklet and you look in here. There's a burning skull. There you go. Stuff on the film. Very nice little light booklet there. And uh, yeah, that is Burning Paradise, um, which I will be happy to revisit in a not so crappy looking edition. Very nice. Next up, we've got two Kung Fu films from Dark Force um, that I know very little about these ones at all. Absolutely nothing, but I'm gonna pick them up. One of them had a slip cover. I don't remember which one, but the slip cover was not good, so it is in the box. I'm just gonna show the artwork we have here, which is interesting. It's um, very smoothed over artwork, and like I don't know if it's AI enhanced or something. I don't know, whatever. Deadly Kung Fu Factor. It doesn't matter when you get to this kind of like really obscure film, you get what you get. That's that's as simple as that. Uh, extremely rare 1978 Hong Kong production has been missing for a very long time and has been highly sought after by martial arts movie fans for the last 20 years. Also known as Zhua Hu and The Delivery, it stands among the rest with the high production values and some steamy sex scenes. Dark Force Entertainment recently discovered the long lost original OCN uh, 35mm used, by, used for this new 4K restoration with Mandarin audio track. Directed by Ta Xuan Su, the much anticipated Blu-ray release is likely the only thing you will find on this movie anywhere. It's quite likely correct. In fact, the only trace of its existence online are the original movie posters, which you didn't use. So, I don't know, guys. Um, Dark Force is proud to present the complete uncut version of the film. There are a few minor spots of missing audio due to incomplete soundtrack. You get what you get. The film and Shadow, Shadow Fist Hunter are definitely the two rarest titles. Uh, so I'll get to that. 4K restoration, original Mandarin audio with English subs. Obviously no features, because this is what you get. Deadly Kung Fu Factor, um, sorry, directed by yeah, Tai Shung Hsu, and um, this one, yeah, is Shadow Fist Hunter, again with the sort of custom artwork, it's interesting. Shadow Fist Hunter is an extremely obscure martial arts film with very little information known about it, again. Story of a fighter that avenges his slain father recovers stolen gold. Made in 73, the film had a Hong Kong theatrical release as the Shadow Chaser in the US during the early 80s as Bruce Lee's Shadow Fist, of course it was. Um, there had not been any kind of home video release shot in the awesome 2.35 to 1 scope ratio 
It features beautiful locations and cinematography. Uh, Dark Force present this rare gem for the first time ever from the uncut 35mm ICN uh, in 4K scan in a historian commentary track on this one. So there you go. Um, starring Yip Tai Kong and Xiong Ming. So yeah, it's nice. I mean, it's really cool that they've done this to get these things. And I, you know, I encourage them to do more uh, Kung Fu films. So good stuff from Dark Force. Next up, into the Hong Kong horror here. This is an upgrade for me from my um, legendary, my Joy Sales legendary, which I wasn't fully expecting to happen. The Blue Jean Monster. This is good fun when I watched it um, when I first got that disc. Your, your crazy, you know, horror action kind of supernatural horror type thing. Um, after a brave Hong Kong lawman is killed in a shootout, the body is reanimated by Frankenstein style of bolt of lightning. Provided he gets crank-style regular jolts of electricity, he continues to fight crime, an invulnerable zombie cop. <laughs> God, the... It's good fun. Jeez, that reads funny. Perennial Cantonese movie tough guy uh, Xing Fuon uh, from The Killer gets a lead in his own, in his Hong Kong version of Dead Heat. Yeah, that's basically it. With a supporting cast including Gloria Yip from The Story of Ricky and Pauline Wong from Mr. Vampire. Blue Jean Monster blends gross out horror, comedy, action in a unique horror Kong Tong take on the cinematic undead. Oh dear. Some pictures there from the back. <laughs> God, it's, it's a goofy one, but it's good fun. Uh, slipcase, double sided fold out poster, HD, Cantonese mono, English subs, man made monster, interview with assistant director Sam Leong, HK trailer, stills gallery, reversible cover, etc. etc. Let's take a look in here. So. I do like that. That was, I think, that is pretty much what was on the legendary. Pretty much that was it. Could have been one side. Legendaries have sort of two sides. That might have been like the the, the lengthy side that they do. Don't remember. Um, disc and yeah, poster. So that's it. That's what you get. It's a good fun one. This if you if you don't know what you're getting, I'd say yeah, definitely. If you're into the Mr. Vampire stuff, just go check this one out. It's good fun. Uh, from 1991 and uh, directed by Ivan Lai. Good. Happy to have. Uh, this one is Beach of the War Gods by um, Jimmy Wang Yu. Well, with Jimmy Wang Yu, I should say. Um, no, it is actually by Jimmy Wang Yu, but he's also... Anyway, let's just read it. Kung Fu innovator Jim, Jimmy Wang Yu from One Arm Boxer blends Wuxia Mayhem with Seven Samurai in Beach of the War Gods. In the waning days of the Ming Dynasty, Jap Japanese marauders raid villages on the Chinese coast. Wandering Swordsman, that is Wang Yu, directed star, single-handedly dispatches a group of the invading thugs and agrees to help defend the town. Assembles a core team of highly skilled warriors, including mercenary knife thrower Leng Peng, uh, that's Ye Tian from Blood of the Dragon, hot-headed swordsman Iron Bull Chao Han Se from A Touch of Zen. Together they train the townsfolk to stand up to the pirates using strategy and skill. When the army launches an all-out assault on the town, a ferocious battle rages, leading a final conflict on the Beach of the War Gods. 50th anniversary! Beach of the War Gods ranks amongst Jimmy Wang Yu's best films. Bristly paced historical adventure, bursting with wild action. Excellent. Um, slip cover here. Nice design here by uh, Tony Stella. I like that custom artwork. HD uh, from HK Theatrical Cut from 2K Restore. Original Mandarin mono, English dubbed, English subs, uh, newly translated for this release, new feature length audio commentary by Frank Jiang. Um, beached with Mike and Arn talk Jimmy Wang Yu. Brand new interview with action cinema experts Mike Leader and Arne Van Emma. Uh, archival interview with Jimmy, Jimmy Wang Yu from 2001, courtesy of the Frederick M. Rosine Video Archive. Stills Gallery trailers and limited edition collector's booklet. We shall take a look in here. I like this artwork though, it's a, that's, that's just a bit of fun, that one. I like that one, that's fun. Uh, disc, do like that cover of that booklet too. Beach of the War Gods. Take a look, see. Cover, and uh, yep, stuff, and things about film. Very good. Always nice to have these booklets, a little read while you watch if you can. A little bit more difficult with subtitle films, but you know, how to read after. There you go. Beach of the War Gods, uh, starring and supposedly directed by, at least presented. I mean, it says a film by Jimmy Wang Yu, so we'll just say it's directed by and starring. Very good. Next up, and I watched this one two nights ago. She shoots straight. 
Should, and I was saying to the boy, Extra the Mutilator, probably should have been called She Stabs Straight, because there's a lot of knifery in this one. Joyce Godenzi stars in this violent action classic about a newly wed police officer who battles a Vietnamese gang while also trying to impress her new in-laws. That's its own subplot in this film. Inspector Mina is a career-focused officer who's just married her supervisor, Tony Leung Kai Fai, who himself comes from a family of dedicated police officers. Her new sisters-in-law, including Karina Lau, Ashes of Time, are a little jealous that Mina outranks them. But when a gang of violent Vietnamese criminals led by the always excellent Yuan Hua from Eastern Condors and Kung Fu Hustle, yes, target the family, the sisters unite in a lethal force of vengeance. Also starring Hama Samo Hyung, he's got a small kind of role, directed by Corey Yuan, so that's why you watch this one. Yes, madam. He shoot, she Shoots Straight is another slice of top-tier Hong Kong action. And it really is. Uh, the start's great, the ending is exceptional. The, I mean, there's good stuff in the middle. There's also your, your HK drama stuff um, does happen in the middle. A lot of teariness, somebody dies, goes on and on for quite a bit. But it is still fine. It, it, it's not like it's a drudge to get through. Um, but that ending, oh. As soon as they hit the ship at the end, and you'll know because they'll be on a ship, just, yeah, put your watching glasses on. Um, Ocard uh, with the Darren Wheeling artwork. New restoration, theatrical cut from 2K, restore, uh, Cantonese mono, optional surround sound, stick to the mono. Uh, English subs, newly translated for this release, new audio commentary by Frank Jiang. God, he's on all of them, really, isn't he? Um, and also cinema experts Mike Leader and Arne Van Emmer. Brand new interview with Val Valerie So, professor of Asian American studies at San Fran State University. Brand new filming locations feature at uh, English opening and closing credits as a feature. And reversible sleeve design which is that one looking buff good stuff and uh yep disc and booklet take a look yeah it's a good one went straight into my um girls with guns collection as i now have that shelf i love that i have like, like I, that i can now have a, a heroic bloodshed cross girls with guns section on a shelf and use a label gun to do that it made me so happy to set that up. Love micro genres. Good stuff. That is. She shoot shoot she shoots straight. And she stabs it quite well too. Next up. This one's great. Inspector wears skirts. Uh, and they got part two on the way. Um, and there's up to four of them, so I mean strap yourselves in, we might get all of them. Lovely, lovely really, really nice artwork on this one. Nice custom artwork there with Cynthia. Cynthia Rothrock team of high kicking oh pardon me high kicking female super cops prove themselves a match for any man alive as they tackle foes from terrorists to jewel thieves action icon jackie chan put together a supreme team of lethal ladies including shaw brothers icon Wai yin hung from my young auntie american martial arts star cynthia rothrock from china o'brien which is getting its eureka and vinegar syndrome releases soon so excited for that action scenes for these beauties on the beat are delivered by Jackie Chan's own stunts team, who also co-star in the film. So the action on this is really, really good. Another one from my legendary films I can upgrade. Brand blending slapstick comedy, because Hong Kong, with high impact action to deliver more fun than should be lawful. <laughs> yep, and uh, special edition includes a slipcase, as you can see here. Uh, fold out poster, girls with skirts. A look at the inspector wears skirts role in the girls with guns genre. I didn't make that genre up, it's a real thing. Um, high definition presentation, 2.0 Cantonese mono, dual mono with uh, translated English subs and audio commentaries with all the people that you've heard from the last five releases I just talked about. That's what the legendary cover was. And it's sort of a spot the who's who, which is really fun. Disc, poster, won't unfold. And yeah, it's also called Top Squad. There is a German media book that I nearly bought now, this is getting to the point now when you start seeing German media books, you're like, give it six months and you might get a UK or an American release. It's exactly what happened here. Um, they had Top Squad with a very boobalicious cover of, of Cynthia. Um, so, yeah, this is a, a yeah Golden Harvest flick. Girls with skirts. Great photos and stuff in here too. This is a really, really good one. Uh, and so is the sequel from memory. So, whoops. Get the poster back in there. So, uh, yeah. If you like your girls with guns, get this one. Inspector wears skirts. Good stuff. 
And we move on to Magic Crystal. Didn't think I'd get a nice upgrade on this one. I fought uh, quite hard to get the um, DVD edition that I've got. Um, the one I've got is the best edition. Like there's German ones, there's a few other ones, but they're all inferior in some way or the other. The, the, the Hong Kong DVD I got for this film is the correct audio, it's the correct aspect ratio, it's anamorphic, it, and the, the print is excellent. And then I get a Blu-ray, so it no longer matters. Um, another one with Cynthia, excellent. High kicking Hong Kong soldier of fortune Andy Lau from Infernal Affairs finds himself on the trail of an alien artifact, forced to contend with both an intrepid Interpol agent, Cynthia Rothrock, and a Russian crime lord, Richard Norton. It's just like such a good combo. Feet and fists fly fast as a. F oh my god. Feet and fists fly fast and funky on sunny Greek locations on Hong Kong's mean streets. Sunny Greek locations on Hong Kong's main street. Okay. Amid the ruins of an ancient UFO. Like, this is an everything film. Some of the martial arts in this is, is, is the ridiculous level. Like, it's there's some great chair foo that happens in this film. Definitely worth seeing that. Populist Hong Kong filmmaker Wong Jing from City Hunter remixes E.T. into a wacky comedy caper, delivers some of the best traditional kung fu fighting ever performed in a modern setting. Yeah, Cynthia is off the hook, but Andy Lau is crazy in this thing. Um, yeah. Much enjoy, much enjoy. Uh, yeah, just poster, disc, won't go further into that, but original artwork. So yeah, more, more people can now see Magic Crystal because uh, it was one that was uh, an extra the mutilator like telling me to buy it and watch it and I was looking for ages to get the correct edition and I got the correct edition. I paid quite a bit for the correct edition. Now it's worthless because Blu-ray, hooray. Still going through this pile, and you can already see the amount of box sets behind me, which we're going to have to go through super quick, because I'm the copy here forever. Last Hero in China, very reflective cover, this one. Um, but uh, yeah, bit of, uh, bit of bit of Jet Li action in this one. And uh, yeah, not one I'm familiar with, I haven't seen this one before. Legendary Kung Fu Master Wong Fai Hung Jet Li, his mischievous students unwittingly moved their Po Chi Lam clinic to an undesirable location. But it becomes the least of their worries as they uncover skullduggery on the part of trading associations, a cult, and even the authorities all over the map. Um, doesn't really tell you too much about it. It's very, very short synopsis there. Um, but you get uh, 185 aspect ratio uh, 1080p presentation. Doesn't say anything about the scam. So there's probably maybe reused one. Doesn't matter. Um, theatrical mono uh, with English subs. Cantonese home video mix with English subs. English dub, commentary with James Mudge, that's a different guy. Deleted scenes, Jet Li's UK visit in 2000, obviously a little featurette. Hong Kong and English trailers, stills gallery and reversible cover, which we're looking at now. I really like that reversible cover, it's quite fun. You get the disc and you get poster, so I won't pull that out. But yeah, yeah not much to be said for on the back here, the synopsis is quite light on. But it is Jet Li, it is from, what year is this? 93 and it is 88 films so i expect good times so good stuff next up i've already kicked into this box set more jet lee heroes and villains and talking to a good buddy extra the mutilator it seems like this is incredibly hard uh in the u.s to get um the usual like you know go through diabolic they get everything they haven't got it the amazon specifically will not ship to the u.s so i don't know what's going on here with this one um maybe i don't know try your luck but uh, for me, Amazon Australia was just there, I just ordered it, no issues. Um, yeah, Heroes and Villains, three films starring Jet Li. It's a nice custom slip, but there are three films, so we'll go through that. After the massive success of Once Upon a Time in China series, Jet Li moved away from period setting, started to focus on action films set in the modern era, which is generally my preference. I do like this kind of, you know, gun fu in the 80s kind of films in the 90s. A decision that would make him a global icon, one of the biggest stars in the history of Hong Kong cinema. Can't argue. The Enforcer, aka My Father is a Hero, this is the one I've watched. He is an undercover police officer tracking down a notorious Hong Kong crime lord. Teaming up with his martial arts prodigy son, he's actually really good. He's like a kid's like, what, seven? Something like that. He's actually really quite good. Um, there's actually a whole school of them. There's a scene with all of this, like, seven, six, seven, eight year olds, martial arts school, and they're all kicking ass. It's really good fun. Um, uh, and fellow officer Anita Mui, uh, together they lay down the new law in Doctor. Uh, that's that film, which is really good. Then there is, so that's 
this is probably the best way to show you. That's the three films. The Enforcer, which is um, My Father a Hero, AKA. Dr. Y in the scriptures with no words, and then Hitman, which is the one people may know the most. I one had a Hong Kong Legends DVD. There you go, and you're just showing you now, you get three discs, and yes, just trust me, there's stuff in the booklet. We won't go in there again. Um, and yeah, Dr. Y in the scripture with no words, a down in his luck pulp fiction author, Jet Li, lives vicariously through one of his characters. In Indiana Jones-esque adventurer searching for a mythical scripture. Then, in Hitman, the third film, Lee plays a young assassin with a sense of justice who crosses paths with the King of Killers, a legendary vigilante with a huge bounty on his head. Eureka presents Most Beloved, etc. So it's a great little set. Um, I don't know why it's so hard to get overseas. If you happen to know in the US a way to get this set, put it in the comments so others can work it out. Um, Hong Kong theatrical cuts of all three films. Uh, 2K restoration on this guy, and it did look really good. Um, and Dr. Y in 2K restoration, and Hitman in a HD restoration. Um, so, da, 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 going stepping down. Um, original Cantonese audio tracks, original English dub audio tracks, nearly in translated subtitles, international presentation of Dr. Y, uh, alternate contract killer presentation of Hitman, and yeah, contract killer, I've seen that edition floating around various like DVDs or maybe VHS. Um, new audio commentaries in all three by the usual, <laughs> and uh, deleted scenes and yeah a bunch of stuff gently feature it so it's a good set uh for three that you know it's nice that they chucked them all together actually a bunch of gently films and i really enjoyed uh the first one so i'll check out i'm gonna probably check out the dr y next because indiana jones ripoffs they're always good fun uh and speaking of jet lee and his films that he was doing once upon a time in china um this is me just being late to the party i had the dvd set and i hang on to it for ages thinking i'm not going to bother upgrading then there was a fancy Eureka edition, and I missed it and it sold out. But I actually like this one. It's a nice, thin. Kind of... I'm all about shelf saving a little bit these days, you know. Uh, but the Once Upon a Time in China trilogy, quite classic. People know this one, you know. But uh, reading for the back for those that don't. Jet Li is the real life Cantonese folk hero Wong Fai Hung, a physical embodiment of the tr traditional Chinese values and moral incorruptibility. Once Upon a Time in China series is a martial arts epic that charts. China's transition into modern world as it gradually abandons its old traditions begins to accept the inevitable encroach of Western cultures. Uh, part 1, 19th century Canton, Wang Fai Hung battles ruthless imperial forces determined to subjugate his country and enslave his people, leading to a cinematic fight sequence still regarded as one of the best ever filmed. Part 2, uh, he's facing off against the White Lotus cult, dangerously xenophobic group seeking to drive all European influence out of China as well as corrupt military officer played by Donnie Yen in his breakthrough role. In part three, uh, he travels to Peking, is forced to enter a martial arts contest. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's so good. Forced to enter a martial arts contest. You're into like the director video, blood sports sequels here. In order to prevent an assassination attempt against a prominent Chinese diplomat who wants to showcase traditional Chinese martial arts and restore national pride. Action sequence choreo choreographed by legendary Yuing Wu Ping. Once Upon a Time in China series, glorious high point in martial arts filmmaking. Eureka Classics proud to present Sui Hark's original trilogy. Ta-da! Uh, as well as a Once Upon a Time in China and America. So you get the three and you get two more. And I just showed Last Hero in China. So that's all the ones you need. All the Once Upon a Times, all of the something in China's bang all together and that other one. So. Um, there is a truckload of things on the back here, uh, of the original this tracks and 4K restorations, etc, etc, and the usual people doing the, um, commentaries and, what's this? Original Mandarin sync sound audio. Okay. And, uh, yep, there's a 48 minute Legend of Wong Fai Ung documentary, featurette. Um, there's a bunch of featurettes on here, so yeah. You get everything you need, and yeah, this is the nice sort of slimline version, which I'm kind of preferring, honestly. So, very nice. Nice little reissue there. Once Upon a Time in China Trilogy. Uh, moving on, we get the Kung Fu Cult Master, starring Samo Hung, and it's a Wong Jing film. This is going to be good fun, I know this for sure. Um, this is one of director Wong Jing's most underappreciated films, Wuxia Extravaganza, placed on, based on Jim Yong's The Heaven, Sword and Dragon Saber. 
Warring martial arts sects fight over a pair of mythical swords that grant the wielder power of the martial arts world. A young hero, Jet Li, who pra whose parents were killed in a pursuit of these magical weapons, goes into a quest to become a great martial artist and end the conflict. Presented here, new restoration of the film elements, you classics presents, etc. First time, etc. etc. So yeah, Jet Li, Sammo Hung, uh, Xiong Yu, and Shala Xiong. Um, and all the usual stuff on the back, including an archival interview with Sammo Hung from 2004. Very nice. There's a nice poster art too. Disc booklet with some more info. There you go. Very nice. Man, these sets from Eureka. This this could have just been a Eureka update if I really thought about it. Um, but amazing. More Jet Li. I've gone from not having that much Jet Li to a boatload. Like I had lots of modern Jet Li. Like your Lethal Weapon 4 onwards kind of Chet Lee, but now I've got a lot of classic stuff. So, yeah, this was a great... A lot of this was sort of Christmas money purchase, and it was just knocking off Jet Lee's and Eureka's. Really good fun. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. That's the next one. Kung Fu Cult Master. Followed by... We have some Angela Mao upgrade. When Taekwondo Strikes. This was on a Shout Factory multi-disc DVD, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah... We have a nice Blu-ray from Eureka. Queen of Kung Fu, Angela Mao, and King of Taekwondo, Jun Ri, join forces in the action-packed Hong Kong classic. Japanese-occupied Korea, resistance leader Lee is captured by Japanese-occupying forces. To rescue him, his pupil Jin, Carter Wong, must get help from Hapkido expert, played by Mao. Together, they fight their way through an army of Japanese villains, played by a number of genre favorites, including Huang In Shik from Way of the Dragon, Kenji Kazama, from the Street Fighter and Samo Hung from the Millionaire's Express and a million other things. Eureka, proud to present, etc, etc, 2K restoration. New slip, uh, HD presentation from 2K scan, Mandarin mono, classic English dub. Uh, new features, uh, best of the best of martial arts films, 1990. I think that's the one I had on VHS. That's a nice inclusion. I think that's the one. Feature length documentary presented by John Saxon. Uh, and interview with actor Billy Chan. Good stuff, whole bunch of stuff here. And uh, yep, a booklet written by James Oliver, not Jamie Oliver, it's not about cooking. There you go, disc, booklet. Da -da -da. There you go. Nice little booklet. Nice poster arts there, lobby cards. Nice collection, very cool. And when Taekwondo strikes. And lastly in this pile, before we get to the mountain of box sets, which I will burn through as quickly as possible, I did say there was another two, two for film coming up, and this one is Hideo Gosha's Samurai Wolf 1 and 2. Out on Eureka. Another really nice artwork there. Beautiful stuff by Iseo Natsuyagi. A duo of Chanabra masterpieces from one of the genre's greatest directors, Hideo Gosha. Um, black and white films from 1966 and 67. Out of a desire to make what he felt was truly no holds barred sword fighting film, Gosha took inspiration from samurai films of Akira Kurosawa, as well as spaghetti western subgenre they, that they had inspired. I love that, full circle. Working with a low budget to free himself from the restrictive oversight of his producers, the result was Samurai Wolf and Samurai Wolf 2 story of charismatic ronin named kiba played by Iseo natsuyagi in the first film kiba wanders into a small town and ends up ensnared in a local conflict that is more than meets the eye in part two kiba gets mixed up in a complex web of in intrigue involving a crooked gold mine owner a cynical swordsman and an arrogant dojo master stunning black and white cinematography ultra stylish action samurai films are lean mean samurai cinema and the master of cinema's range Excellent. There is a nice reversible sleeve. Um, and it does have underneath the part two reversible sleeve. Here's a two disc set for each film and booklets, as we shall show. There you go. That's a classic kind of pose. So many of the samurai black and white films, you see that shot. It's classic stuff. There you go. Nice booklets, some essays, and artwork photos so samurai wolf part one and two i have so much um 
Martial arts viewing, Hong Kong, Japan, so much to view. Great times. I need a bloody drink. All right, let's get into this pile of box sets. Um, I am not going to spend too much time on each of the films um, because there is just too many here. We will start from the top, and it's not often I have to start from the top with box sets, but I picked up Black Cat 1 and 2. I had the 88 films of Black Cat, uh, figuring that they would do part 2, and yes, of course, they have now announced part 2, but sorry guys, Vinegar Syndrome announced a double pack. So, yep, I went there. It's a lovely looking double pack. Um, take a look. Get uh, the book, which is a prop like VS do these monumental things. There you go. Huge book. So these are... Is this, was this a Cat 3? Might have been. Anyway, I'll read a little bit from the back here. Explosive action. Bloody gunfights. Bone-breaking martial arts collide in this Girls With Guns double feature of Black Cat, Black Cat 2. Uh, part 1, 96 minutes. Brutally killing an abusive trucker at a rest stop. Tough as nails drifter Catherine soon finds herself facing life in prison due to violent outbursts. But when daring escape from the courthouse leaves her all but dead... She answers, awakens to find she's been given another lease on life. The only cat, she must train to become an assassin for the CIA under the codename Black Cat. I'll skip down to part two. After undergoing a series of medical experiments in order to become a more efficient assassin, Catherine struggles to maintain what little of her human side is left. Deemed compromised by her higher-ups, she's given one more chance when she's part with a young, hot-headed agent, Robin, Robin Shaw from Mortal Kombat, Catherine must use her newly enhanced skills in order to stop a violent assassin before it claims the next victim. So, yeah, these are good fun. Uh, I never actually got to watch the 88 films part one, but I had both on uh, legendary films. Um, so, nice upgrade here, um, directed by Stephen Shin, and I'm talking about Jade Leung playing the role here of the Black Cat. Um, in fight scenes that will make your head spin. They're good, they're really good fun. There you go. Two discs. And, uh, yeah, just poster. I won't un unveil the poster, but... Yeah, Vinegar Syndrome release. I didn't expect this to happen, to be honest. Um, two discs, newly restored and colour graded by VS. So, they do do their own versions of things. Um, so, there will be difference to the 88 films. Um, Cantonese, English tracks for both films. Commentary by Sam Deegan. Uh, interview with Jade Leung. Brand new interview with her. Brand new interview with martial arts director Ben Ben's Kong Tohoi. Copycat, Black Cat and its Influences, a video essay by author and historian Alexander Hella Nicholas. That could be interesting to watch, 17 minutes. Trailers for both films, and yeah, there you go. Black Cat 1 and 2, and a big old booklet to read stuff at the same time. So thanks, VS, for your contributions. Next up, uh, let's go up here. We're going to have... No, the last of the smaller ones, the Sabata trilogy. Been out for a little while, I think, this one, hasn't it? Uh, 2021. It was just, it was still available and it was going quite cheap. And I decided, as you can plainly see, I wanted to bolster my Spaghetti Westerns. Um, and Sabata trilogy was going to fulfill that. So we will, um, there you go. There's some original artwork there. But I shall read from the back first. Three films Sabata, 1969. Who he is and where he comes from, no one knows, but the leading citizens of the western town of Doherty think he knows too much. They want to silence him forever, get ready for the fast-paced explosive action. How many times have I said that today? So good. I picked the best channel name sometimes. Lee Van Cleef, from A Few Dollars More, stars as Sabata, a mysterious steely-eyed gunslinger. He imposes his bullet-laced brand of justice on the town. Sequel is Adios Sabata from 1970. He's got Yul Brunner in it. Uh, I won't read everything else. And Return of Sabata 1971 has uh, Lee Van Cleef in it again. Um, this time he's a gambler and thief and uh, has a bunch of Desperado out to get him of $5,000. A whole $5,000. So there you go. That is the trilogy of those, which I'm keen to get into these. Lee Van Cleef, always good. There you go. Three films. And the booklets. I'm going to stop showing the booklets for the moment. But you can all see this one, the Sabata Trilogy. So once you've uh, done your Django's, move on to your Sabata's. Very cool. Happy to check that one out. Um, and we will stick with the theme with the complete Sartana. This was also going quite cheap. Uh, is this, what year is this one put out? 2019. So this one's been kicking around for a while. This might even be a reissue version. I don't know. Slimline cases, you tell me. 
um, but this one was quite cheap again. Um, so the complete Sartana, the films you get, light the fuse, Sartana is coming, uh, have a good funeral, my friend Sartana will pay, Sartana's here, trade your pistol for a coffin, I am Sartana, your angel of death, great titles these, if you meet Sartana, pray for your death, outstanding. I ended up, so this is from Amazon, I ended up getting a full refund, why? Why you might say, this one's fine, this one got smashed up and it ripped the cover. This one got absolutely brutalized and it ripped the cover. The other two are okay. And in America, you buy from Amazon US, something stuff, they say, send it back, we'll send you a new one, fine. In Australia, it doesn't, doesn't work that way. Um, if you buy an import item through Amazon Australia, um, you, you do not have the replacement option. You can send it back for a refund and then order it again. As I told the lovely person on support, it went up $30 and they're like, so I just yelled louder and I got a full refund. So I'm just gonna keep this version. With, I'll, if, I, if I ever get slimline clears, I'll replace it. The, the ripping isn't that bad. So, you know, I'll take free, whatever. Uh, Clint Eastwood's man with no name spawned imitations, variations and shameless ripoffs. Keen to emulate his success at the box office. Within months, a fistful of dollars release. Guillermo Gemma uh, was playing Ringo, who was then followed by Franco Nero's Django, uh, Tony Anthony's The Stranger, and Gianno Garco's Sartana, which we just looked at. Um, each providing their own twist on the Eastwood anti-hero, and each of them subject to their own spate of unofficial sequels, spoofs, and cash-ins. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's what you get with this set here. I'm not going to read all of this. We will be here forever. But trust me, there is a truckload of, uh, of features on here. Uh, and everything's in Italian and in English. So you get the options there. Of course, you get the subtitles for the Italian version. Um, yeah, complete Sartana. I am completely excited for that one. Uh, we shall now move on to, which is what I was super excited about. I love getting these. Forgotten Jali number six. And this one we get Death Carries a Cane which I've always enjoyed this one. Some some sort of listed as a spoof Jarlo, but I don't know, I don't really see it as a spoof. Naked You Die, which is quite a grisly one, and Bloodstained Shadow, which is another good one. So, bam, I get to upgrade a German gray market-ish DVD and a, was it Dark Sky? Old DVD of Naked You Die and the 88 films of Bloodstained Shadow. I now have a nice Forgotten Jarlo Volume 6. I'm loving these sets, I mean, it's probably, Ultimately, it's my favorite thing that Vinegar Syndrome do, is the Forgotten Jarly says. Yeah, Naked You Die, uh, which is directed by Antonio Margheriti. Good stuff. Death Carries a Cane. As I said, this was quite fun. What's really good is that a lot of the, the, the trope in this film is that um, you hear the cane. So, like, you've got the girl in the shadows, like, what's that sound? And you just hear this tick, 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 as the cane as he walks. I thought that was really well done. So, Death Carries a Cane. Uh, directed by Maurizio Prado. I said, I'm not going to get too much into the details of these box sets. We'll be here all night. The Bloodstained Shadow, directed by Antonio Bidio, and this one is really good as well. So, yeah. If you, uh, you know, if you like your Jalo and you just want to dig, you know, all you've done is your Argentos or whatever, and you want to dig further, I really do recommend these sets um, because they have been great all around, honestly. Some films may be better than others. Some of them are more like obscure than others death carries a cane is probably the most obscure here but they've, they've had some seriously obscure titles great set another one uh i picked up the uh fight backs to school trilogy which is uh some stephen chow i do like stephen chow sort of action comedy things and i d i don't have much from him. i only have sort of his shaolin soccer onwards really and then one or two here or there there's god of cookery i've got on dvd um, so I felt I was happy to pick up uh, this set and get a few more of his um, We Aren't Quite at Kung Fu Hustle level stage. And I have not seen these, um, but jeez, look at this artwork. I must have flipped the covers already. So good. So busy. So busy. That's so good. Um, we've got uh, Fight Back to School Part 1, 2 and 3. I'll just read from the back of the first one for you. After a student tour of Hong Kong Police Headquarters, Commissioner's guns go missing. To save the force's reputation, a boyish local sop, Starry, Starry Chow, played by Stephen Chow, much of a stretch, is sent back to school, undercover to retrieve it, but he's 
The halls and playgrounds become every bit as challenging as the main streets of Kowloon. He must also protect his fellow students from a criminal gang. And I guess he does that through part two and three as well, but... Hilarious slapstick Cantonese take on 21 Jump Street, starring Dennis Chan from the Kickboxer franchise and the action from the Jackie Chan stunt team. So, um, yeah, it's ticking everything I want. Um, and, yeah, Stephen Chow, you either do like his slapsticky things or you don't. I've liked what I've seen. Um, and, uh, yeah, looking forward to going through this set. Fight Back to School trilogy. Um, and then we'll do this last one here on top and then work our way from right to left. Mexico Macabre. I wasn't originally going to get this set, um, Mexican horror, aside from your, your Franco, you know, Spanish horror kind of things, but pure Mexican horror, wasn't really sure if it was going to be my thing or not, um, but so many people were telling me that, I think it was, um, yeah, Curse of the Crying Woman, I think was the one people were saying, that you need to at least see that, so I figured I'll bugger it, I'll get the set, um, and a shit ton of features, but let's just have a look at what we get in the set, for the films, I, I like when they do these sort of cardboard things as well. They do very nice presentations. So this is um, Mysterios D, well, Black Pit of Dr. M with its Spanish title. I think these are nice presentations actually. You know, when they're, I wouldn't want to buy like this on a shelf, but in a box, I think they're quite nice presentations. Um, we get uh, The Witch's Mirror, again, nice looking presentation. We get uh, The Brainiac, which uh, I think it was my boy Extro told me it was garbage, but uh, sorry, <laughs> here I am. We will see if it's good or if it's not. The Curse of the Crying Woman, which was the sort of highlight one that was positioned to me. There we go. And big, like a book, like not a booklet, book, big, monstrous book of things and stuff. And some lobby cards, which is nice. Um, there you go. Very cool. So the price had dropped and combination of price had dropped, a recommendation of at least one film and Christmas money loosened the wallet. Like I think this is about 65 Australian. Like it got down to really quite a cheap price for a period there. So of course I was gonna pick it up. It went up like more into the 90s or hundreds soon after, but temporarily it was very cheap. So I picked it up. Mexico Macabre. All right. The Shaw Brothers, I have picked up part four. I don't think I showed this. I think I showed part three recently, but if I have shown this, do excuse me, um, because they just keep building these things out. I don't think I have shown this one, but I will show you uh, in a second what they look like on the shelf when I put them together, my God. But yep, another wonderful set here from Shout. This one you can buy from Amazon or wherever. Um, the Rebel Intruders, two champions of Shaolin, Legend of the Fox, Black Lizard, The House of Traps, Master Avengers, Sword Stained with Royal Blood, Five Element Ninjas, Shaolin Prince, Shaolin Intruders, Holy Flame of the Martial World, Opium, and the Kung Fu Master. We'll just quickly show the covers. There you go. I don't think these are flippable. I think this is just how they were. Good stuff. This one I've seen. Some of, like one or two of these, like 88 films, have already done them. Uh, many of these I had on DVD and many I've never ever even heard of so Shout Factory is doing a good job with these um, I don't know if there's going to be a fifth there's so many of these Shaw Brother films that they could do so you never know but there you go part four this one was slightly more painful to get I had to get this one directly from Shaw uh, from Shout Shaw they should call themselves Shaw, <laughs> Shaw Factory at this point ha 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 I'm so funny the Tai Lung David Chiang set um, they only sell this one direct as I've explained before, there's uh, my, there's at least one of my buddies, and sometimes there's there's three or four of us, will collectively order in for companies like Shout that do not ship to us, and we'll basically find a way to get them sent here. In this case, he's got a friend in the States that does the job for us. Um, so I have the Tai Long David Chiang set, which is great. We get Have Sword, Will Travel, The Heroic Ones, Savage Five, Seven Man Army, All Men Are Brothers, The Blood Brothers, The Duel, Angry Guest, Deadly Duo, Duel of Fists, Vengeance, which I've seen, and Anonymous Heroes. It's, it's a monumental set, this. And it's it, it's bizarre to me that um, they wide release the Shaw Brothers sets, but these ones, they don't. I mean, the same people are gonna buy it. It's, it's I don't see it as being any more obscure or anything like that, so. 
I don't know what they're thinking, to be honest. Yeah, vengeance. It's a good one. But, shout, got a shout. Thankfully, I could get it. So, dipping back into the westerns. This one's been out for a while. Um, and originally, I did tell myself, I don't need to get into spaghetti westerns of this size. And I'm like, why did I deal with that? I don't know why I did that. Which meant that it was it was uh, going to be challenging to get the original version of this. Uh, but a local um, Australian eBay store, like their actual retail store, confirmed, said, no, it's the original, so it was, uh, Vengeance Trails. Hooray! I picked it up. Don't know why I didn't, honestly. I, I was being silly, but um, I think I was just like, oh god, I don't need another series to buy. Yes, I did. It's got Lucio Fulci in it. Duh! Um, so Vengeance Trails, four classic westerns. In this set, we get... Um, but we get a booklet of things, we get a poster of at least one of them, and we get Lucio Fulci's and Franco Nero's Massacre Time, which I watched immediately, and it was a very enjoyable time of massacre, and there was much massacring, but uh, Franco Nero. Uh, his name is Picos, with Robert Woods, Bandidos, uh, with uh, Enrico Maria Salerno from Massi um, Massimo Dalle oh, God. Dallamano. And one that I've been recommended to me, as I should watch next, and I probably should, is Klaus Kinski in And God Said to Cain uh, by Antonio Margaretti. This one's been given a good recommendation to me. Uh, so, yeah, I should be checking this one out at uh, some point soon, I think. The next time that a Western strikes me, I think that might be the one um, that I will check out. So, get them all back in if I can. Ah! Um... But of course, Arrow could not stop there with Just Vengeance Trails. Uh, they soon after, I think I've got the order right. Let's see, five, four, eight, two, I can't even tell, whatever. Let's just pretend it's two and three and three and two, I don't care. This one is Savage Guns. Um, this one, particularly notable because it has Four of the Apocalypse, another full G, and that one I did have on the old Anchor Bay DVD. And now I have in here, this one, I don't know why they changed the design, this one's a slip. Um, you know, I don't know if I was supposed to get a slip on this original one, but I don't, whatever. Um, four disc limited contents. Uh, yeah, as I said, I'm not going to go through all this, but the films, which will take off the slip so I can get to said films. Um, we get uh, I Want Him Dead, El Puro, Wrath of the Wind, and Four of the Apocalypse, which is the full cheap. Maybe I'll even put the slips away so that, you know, I can uh, keep them all just the boxes. You know, uniformity is better than having one slip and not the others. I Want Him Dead. Um, this one directed by... Uh, pa Paolo Bian Biancini. El Puro. Um, they don't make it easy on these things. You have to go hunting. Um... Directed by Eduardo Molagia, Wrath of the Wind. Uh, this one directed by... It's got Terence Hill in it. And directed by Mario Camus. And, yes, Four of the Apocalypse by Lucio Fulci. Um, and it's got Fabio Testi in it. So this one is really good. I've seen that DVD ages ago. Um, poster. And again, big-ass booklet with uh, yeah, interesting recreation artwork on that one, actually. So... Quite the collection here in Savage Guns. Like when I sit down and I want to watch some spaghetti westerns, I'm spoiled for choice at the moment. The next one here, I think this was the latest one, but it could have been the second one. I don't know. Blood, money, uh, we get in this one. Matalo, kill him, find a place to die, vengeance is mine, and $10,000 of blood money. Good stuff. Again, another booklet with more custom artwork. Another poster. Um, a film by R. Let's just find the full name if we can. Romolo Guerreri, $10,000 blood money. Vengeance is mine, great artwork on that one. A uh, film by Giovanni Fargo. A film by Guiliano Carnino, A Place to Die, Find a Place to Die. And Metallo, Kill Him, a film by Cesare Cannavari. Now, I am really out of my depth with these things. Um, you know, I'm reasonable across Italian horror, a Euro crime, uh, a little bit as well, Italian uh, macaroni war films, but spaghetti westerns is new to me, so I really don't know what I'm getting into, besides the full cheese. 
So blood money. I mean, instantaneously, I've got 16 spaghetti westerns there. This Sabata trilogy and the Satana box. It's all going to be very deserty for a while when I get into those. And let's get on to the last two here. Horror sets, which uh, I think probably been shown a lot by now. But we finally have Danza Macabro 2, uh, Italian Gothic collection. I love the first one. Uh, this one is a mix of things. We've got uh, films, and I think one of them was a TV miniseries or something. But uh, three classic films, one landmark miniseries. It says right there on the back. So good stuff. Uh, take a look in here. We've got some more Barbara Steele, which is excellent. Because she stars in Castle of Blood, which one I've seen before. UHD, but you also get the Blu-ray, um, which is important. And it's two disc, so there you go. And various cuts. So there's a cut called Danza Macabre and the Castle of Blood cut, which are different... Um, uh, different editions. So the Danza Macabre has got the length on this. I don't know. I have to go hunting through all this and I don't want. Oh, yeah, there you go. Castle of Blood is 83 minutes and Danza Macabre is. In, and that's in English. Danza Macabre is the Italian with optional English version is 91 minutes. So that's your longer cut of Castle of Blood. Uh, Jekyll is the mini series. I know very little about this one. It's a very plain cover, but I mean, it's a TV series, so there wouldn't have been a poster artwork. Um, two discs set on this one, a North American premiere, and is written and directed and starring Giorgio Albertazzi, who did last year at Mary Bad, um, and has done a miniseries here on Man's Darkest Impulses, Jekyll. Great cover here on this one, The Devil's Lover, Severin. I mean, when Severin do artwork good, they do it good. When they do it bad, we get Spider Labyrinth slipcases. Um, this one's got a soundtrack CD, which is great. For a film I know nothing about, soundtrack CD. Amazing. Um, 1972, filming this one with from Paolo Lombardo. Um, previously only available in edited versions and poor quality transfers. One of the most obscure and bizarre Italian gothics of the 70s. Um, and is led by a smoldering Rosalba Neri of Lady Frankenstein. So there you go, Devil's Lover. The last one here, they have changed their face. Again, really good artwork. It's really, really nice, the old-fashioned painted artwork. From 1971 in Italian and subs, starring Corrado Farina from Baba Yaga, uh, rocking the Italian horror genre with his astounding, uh, talis uh, with his astounding Talisman Meets the Vampires and Long Out of Print 1971 debut. Um, with Aldofo Seeley from Thunderball, there you go, and from Danger Diabolic, and Guilano uh, Disparti and Geraldine Hooper from De uh, Deep Red co starring in this one, and Guilio Baruti from Kill and None, but this is um, Alberto Farina for the first time. Uh, that is, uh, sorry, approved by his son Alberto Farina, but directed by Corrado Farina. There you go. They have changed their face. Not knowing anything about this one, but I haven't so far in these in these uh, gothic horror sets that they've done, um, which makes it all the more fun. I just go in blind. You don't know what you're going to get. Dance and Macabre too. And of course, you've all seen it since I got here. Inside the mind of Coffin Joe, everybody and their dog has shown this set so far. Yes, I have joined the stupid ridiculous waiting list of however they're doing the disc replacement on this one. Which one is it that they stuffed up? Um, I, don't, I don't remember which one it was. Might have been like um, uh, when the gods fall asleep or something. I can't remember. One of the discs is stuffed up. The subtitles stop at 30 minutes. You know, it's in Spanish, so yay. But have you, have you tried getting the replacement disc for this? It's like the people that do the replacement disc campaign are separate to the people that make the films and are definitely separate to the offshore customer support. They don't know what you're talking about when you're trying to do this. Um, so far, I've, I've sent six messages. I've, re I've received various broken replies. Some saying, can you also add this piece of information? Followed immediately by, we don't know what you're talking about. Can you give us all the information all over again? And, uh, and in both cases, I've had them escalated into the void. And, uh, so I had, actually, at this point, don't know if I'm getting a replacement disc. I don't know what your experience is like, but my God. Arrow Support, you need to ditch this THG company. You shouldn't have sold to them. They're bad. They are really bad. The Hut Group, they suck. Coffin Joe, Against the World. Book. Massive book. Um, 
but we get uh, hallucinations of a deranged mind we get host hostel of naked pleasures the strange hostel of naked pleasures the strange world of coffin joe uh the end of man and the strange world of jose mojica marins and you get um uh was it what's it called again embracement of evil uh embodiment of evil embodiment of evil um quite the set and um yeah but you get more films though you get when the gods fall asleep is on one of those discs and hellish flesh is on one of those discs and hallucinations of a deranged mind there's a poster in there as well but at this point i think you have all seen this you've all been caught in the same oh my god i've got to get my disc replaced but bottom i mean when it comes down to it it is still a great set and if you want coffin joe in best quality and pretty much all the key films including the modern ones you want to get this set coffin joe inside the mind of coffin joe and i am spent i'm done this is the update um yeah 10 weeks or so since the last big update i did do yeah two updates on just some uh shot on video horror dvds i picked up and i did do um a shopping video which uh i showed off the um, latest severin films like um uh cemetery man and and all those ones that came in that lot so go back and check those out if you didn't see those already but my god this is one hell of an update i don't know when the next just this kind of update is going to be um at this point i don't actually have that many films arriving they all kind of arrived and we have done the update the era 4444 film run and kill has finally shipped and there are a few other things on the way but um Anyway, we'll see if I do one in April or maybe it'll be May. I don't know. But I hope you enjoyed this mega, I know it's going to be a mega DVD and Blu-ray update. Losing my voice. I'm going hoarse. If you liked, please like and subscribe. Check out this guy. And check out this guy. I'll see you next time.